Amen. Glory to God. I'd like to greet everyone with the peace of the Lord Jesus. I'd like to invite those who have their Bibles to open at this moment the book of Acts, Acts chapter 20, Acts 20, we're going to read from verse 7, Acts 20, verse 7, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, verse 7, is here being projected. We're going to read a couple of verses of this chapter. Now, on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. There were many lamps in the upper room where they were gathered together. And in a window sat a certain young man named Eutychus, who was sinking to a deep sleep. He was overcome by sleep, and as Paul continued speaking, he fell down from the third story and was taken up dead. But Paul went down, fell on him, and embracing him said, Do not trouble yourselves, for his life is in him. Now when he had come up, had broken bread and eaten, and talked a long while, even till daybreak, he departed, and they brought the young man in alive, and they were not a little comforted. Lord God, we want to glorify you and praise your holy name, because for us it's a privilege to be before your presence, Lord, to glorify and praise you, Lord. We ask, Father, that as we meditate on your word, that you bless us. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. My brethren, the text that we just read here speaks there about an experience of Paul and the disciples, but especially the life of a young man, young man called Eutychus. And the text is wonderful because it points out to us what is the project of God for our lives. It points out for us, a project of salvation, what God has prepared for each one of us. We're going to begin our meditation tonight in verse 7, when the Word speaks to us about a moment. The Word tells us they were together there on that city, and the Bible says that they were breaking the bread and speaking about the Word of God preaching what was the will of the Lord. And the Word says that at that moment was midnight. And the first thing that we need to understand that is the Word of God points out for a moment in which we're living. Midnight speaks of the moment, a spiritual moment. Midnight speaks of the moment in which the darkness, the thick darknesses, the thick darkness are upon the world. But it's interesting that the Word says that the place where they were, in the temple, there were many lights where they were gathered. And my brethren, the first thing that we need to understand is that the project of God for our lives is a project that is immediate. It's a project for this moment, for this moment. It's a project that when God presents it to man, man needs to understand that that is the moment in which the God set aside to work on his life. There at midnight, it shows a moment of darkness. Surely there, the city, the majority of those people, they were sleeping. It was a large city. But there, that people was gathered, seeking the Lord. And my brethren, we leave a moment of thick darkness, a moment in which man has not been able to discern what God has reserved for his life. And man has not discerned what is the will and the project of God for his life. But my brethren, we can already glorify the Lord because at midnight, in the midst of the thick darknesses, there is a place where there is light. The light speaks of the presence of the Holy Spirit, 
speaks about the re revelation, the direction and the knowledge of God. Jesus says that He is the light of the world. So the first thing that we need to understand tonight is that there is an environment. The world is in darkness, but there is a people that has been chosen to be part of the light, to understand what is happening, to discern the moment. And my brethren, each one of us that, who are here, we're going through the same moment because the light is present in our midst. My brethren, the word continues speaking that there Paul, he was making a speech, but that young man, he, he was sitting on a window. They were on the third floor. This young man was sitting on a window and at a certain point he was taken over by uh, by a deep sleep that took place during the long lengthy speech of Paul and my brethren we are well, living this moment in which there is darkness and light and it is a moment for us that we need to understand as a moment of definition where the Lord calls us, He calls us so that we can have a new life or to make a stand before the Lord and before man. And the Bible says that Eutychus was sitting at the window and interesting to observe this situation because sitting at the window speaks of a position where he was able to see what was inside as well as what was uh, outside it speaks of someone that doesn't have a firm position in the presence of the Lord. It speaks of, of a person that knows the Lord, but at the same time, a person that is concerned about the things that is around him. Surely, he could look at the lights of the city, the movement of this, the ships, everything that took place there. My brethren, many times, we are servants of God, in spite of the fact that one day we have been introduced to this light. Many times we place ourselves in the same position because as men, we begin to look to what is around us. Maybe a trial, it may be something that has been introduced to us. And we as men, sometimes we lose what is the great blessing of God for our lives. We allow the things of this world to steal our focus from the eternity. And my brethren, when it happens to man, what happens is what happened with that young man. The Bible says that he was taken over by a deep sleep. And my brethren, when man stops looking to God, when man allows the things of this life to rise up and take the place of God in his heart, Man begins to sleep, and sleeping here speaks about a condition, a spiritual condition, to be slumbering. Someone that is in a, a situation where that person is not able to discern what is happening around that person. He stopped to he hearing and feeling the fellowship with the brethren. And my brethren, the Lord has shown tonight that there are a couple lives who are here with us. They are in this situation. They are like they are sleeping. And it is interesting that the word says that he fell asleep because of the lengthy speech of Paul. And it's interesting the Bible emphasizing that about the lengthy speech of Paul. And we remember a text that is in Romans that says that our salvation is now closer to us than when we accept it. It speaks about discerning the time. Maybe we as men we may look to the moment in which you are leaving, and maybe in our minds we may think, but the Lord is, is the Lord returning? Is this the, the moment? For how long have we been waiting for this? Maybe isn't it an opportunity for, for me to go astray from the Lord just a little bit? My brethren, the Word tells us that the one who loses the focus from the Lord the text that we just read speaks about it. The one who goes astray from the path of the Lord and ends up like a, the Eutychus. He's, that person is taken over by a deep sleep and the Bible says that that young man fell off that 
window of the third floor. And the Bible says, as we continue, that when they went there to see, they picked him, picked him up. The young man was dead. He had lost his life. My brother, how serious this expression is and how important for us to pay attention to this detail of the Word of, the, of God. Amen. For a moment. For uh, a moment where he goes astray. A moment when he allowed himself to be taken away by the things of this world. He loses his life. He loses his salvation. My brethren, we live in a moment of definition, like I just said. We live a moment in which man needs to have their life transformed and they need to make a choice. The choice is to live beside their Savior. The life of having a life that is transformed, a life that is different from what the world offers us, a life that is anchored on the teachings of the Holy Spirit. That's the moment in which you're living. My brethren, it is wonderful when we understand that the project of salvation for the life of man is based on the mercy of the Lord towards our lives, on the great love of the Father towards each one of us. And the text on verse 10 it speaks about this great love. The Bible says that, but Paul went down, fell on him, and embracing him said, do not trouble yourself, for his life is in him. My brethren, blessed be the name of the Lord, because this verse points out to the most important moment of history, a moment in which the Lord Jesus came down from his glory. They were on the third floor, and when Paul comes down from the third floor, he went to be with that young man who's dead. Jesus came down from his glory. He came from this position of Savior. He was beside the Father of Eternity. But he looked down to our lives. He saw a situation of needy. And he gave himself for love to, towards us. He gave himself on the cross to, to die for love towards our lives. And the Bible says that Paul embraced that young man. He speaks about the great love of God towards our lives. We who are not deserving of this salvation. One day, because God's mercy, because of God is all-knowing, and because of His infinite love, one day God sends His beloved Son to die for our lives and embracing our souls, embracing our hearts. And that the expression that man uses, that Paul uses at that moment, is the same expression that the Lord uses towards our lives. And he says, Do not be perturbed, because His life is in Him. My brethren, the Lord sent His only Son to save our souls from death. So it doesn't matter what we may go through in our lives. It doesn't matter the trials. Our souls belong to our Savior. And my brethren, when the project of salvation is revealed to each one of us, what we have learned and when we are called by the Lord, my brethren, the Lord restores our soul back from death. And the Bible says that we have all sinned and there was a judgment of death against upon each one of us. But because, because of the blood of Jesus, we are purified. Through the blood of Jesus, we are led to have an experience that transforms death into life. That's why Paul speaks in this way. His soul was in him. My brethren, the Lord God sent His only begotten Son to spare our souls, to spare our souls from death so that we may, might have hope that one day we will live with our God eternally. We are in this world, but as the Word says, we do not belong to this world. We belong to a God that is in eternity, that has prepared for us an a heavenly dwelling. We do not belong to this world. Our treasure is not on this earth. Our values are on this are not on this world. My brethren, our treasure is in eternity. That's why we say we sing glory to the King because He has prepared eternity for each one of us. We know that one day we will be with Him eternally. 
And the word says that we walk towards a place where there will be no crying or sadness. My brethren, this is the place that the Lord has prepared. That's why He sent His only begotten Son to die for our lives. And my brethren, it's important for us to speak about this because the Lord has shown that there, and there are lives that are in our midst that are in the same situation as this young man. They are sleeping away from the direction, not feeling anymore the presence of God. But the Lord tonight wants to remind each one of us that there is an eternity prepared for so that we can live with Him eternally. The Lord wants to remember each one of us that as Paul embraced the life of the young man that day, God has embraced our lives and He has shown to each one of us His infinite love towards each one of us. And the Lord continues saying that after Paul has give, have been given this word, it's interesting that once again He went up and broke the bread. My brethren, God sent His only Son to die for love towards our lives. The inspection of the Paul was the, was the following. Do not uh, trouble yourself because His life is in Him. And my brethren, tonight is the night in which the Lord has spoken to each one of us that tonight is the night of definition before His presence. But it is interesting that the Lord teaches that our salvation de depends on a call that comes from eternity, but also depends on a, an acceptance that comes from man. Paul went up and he broke the bread. And my brethren, the Lord Jesus went back to eternity. But the Lord Jesus, he left the Holy Spirit inhabiting in our lives, inhabiting in our midst, inhabiting in our hearts. And breaking of bread speaks about fellowship, of living off of the, the direction of the Lord and walking according to what God has instructed into our lives and to be guided by the Holy Spirit of God. My brethren, the word says that Paul simply went up. And the Lord Jesus, he gives to man the opportunity for us to accept the project of salvation. And, but my brethren, it is up to us to accept. It's up to us to make a decision for our lives. It is up to each one of us to look to our, inside of our hearts and to pray to God so that God may correct what is, what is wrong what is not correct, so that God may give us a new way of life. And the Bible says that Paul, he went up and broke the bread, and that, at that moment, they carried that young man alive, because that young man felt the touch, felt the touch. He, that young man had an experience that transformed death into life. And my brethren, the Lord wants to give to us this same experience of transforming death into life. That young man had his life restored. And my brethren, tonight, the Lord wants to restore the life of each one of us. And it is interesting that the word says that they went up with their hearts comforted. And Paul finished his message and he went up. My brethren, the moment for us to accept the Lord is tonight. There, Paul was getting ready to leave that place. It shows to us also the moment in which we as church, we are waiting for the moment in which Jesus will come to take his church, the moment in which Jesus will come in the clouds to call us to inhabit with him eternally. And my brethren, at this moment, this is one moment alone. We need to be ready to go up with him. And the Bible says that there will be a moment of the call. And the ones who are ready, they will go up. There is not a second opportunity, my brethren. The moment in which we are living is a moment of definition. The trials, they have grown in number. And when we see around us, when we look around us, we see a situation that None of us could have ever imagined. We see the world in a situation that no one expected. But my brethren, we are servants of God. 
we know that we live a moment in which the prophecy is being fulfilled. Troubles, troublesome days are the days in which we are, are days of anguish, days of trial, days of tribulation. But also, my brethren, are days in which the Lord has revealed Himself to His church. The Lord Jesus has spoken to the hearts of the ones who are seeking Him. The Lord has spoken to the hearts of the ones who open their lives to the Lord. And my brethren, we are a people, a privileged people, because tonight we are here gathered and our God is present to visit and transform our hearts. At that moment, that young man, he had an experience. He went there. He, he was resurrected and death was transformed into life. And my brethren, the Lord Jesus came to transform death into life. And tonight, the Lord speaks to each one of us that this is the moment of in which He wants to transform death into life. He wants to transform your path. The Lord has shown through the spiritual gifts a couple of lives who are here tonight. The Lord has shown a vision regarding a life. This life has been praying for blessing. The Bible says that, the Revelation says that this, this blessing that people is seeking is a physical thing. This, this family has been praying and crying for this blessing. But the Lord was also showing the, the head of the household. This man, he has a great difficulty in his life. The gift showed literally that it was like in one of the walls on his bedroom. The wall was dirty and was necessary for this wall to be cleaned so that the blessing would be uh, arrive, arriving to that family. The Bible says that when we go to pray to the Lord, went into our bedroom and closed the door, it speaks about a moment of intimacy with the Lord. The revelation is saying that you lost your intimacy with the Lord. Well, you no longer have intimacy to speak with the Lord. And it is interesting that you even have been trying to hide this from your family and your wife. But tonight, the word of the Lord is that you need to transform your life. You need to remove what is hindering you, you from coming to the Lord. Because in this way, the Lord will give you this blessing that your family has been seeking. But much more, the Lord will give the blessing of salvation to your heart. The Lord also has shown you know, the special gift, the life of another man. The Bible says that this young man, this other man, is losing life, is beating erratically. The Bible, the, the revelation says that his heart was dirty. Something that entered into his heart and prevented his heart from working normally. But the gift was saying tonight that a vaccine was applied, a medication was applied, and this man's heart began to beat normally. My brethren, the Eutychus was sitting at the window at that position. He was able to look to everything that was outside as well as from what was inside. He didn't have a heart that was paying attention to the words. And that's why he fell. That's why he fell into this deep sleep. And the Lord was showing that this is what is happening to the life of this, young, this man. There's something in your life that is causing you to go straight from the Lord. But the Lord at this moment wants to transform your life. He wants to restore your heart. He wants to restore fellowship and the joy of salvation. The Lord also has shown the angels would go to each home. And it is interesting that the gift was showing that when the angels, angels went to the homes, they would find many of the brethren sleeping. And there the angels would carry a word. A gift was showing that those angels would awake at that moment and they would bring a word for the brethren to participate on the service and was persistent to uh, Com trying to convince them to participate in the service. My brethren, the service is the moment in which the Lord operates. We know that the service is the feast of grace. It's a moment in which the angels are wandering amongst us. 
in the moment in which the Lord is renewing after a day of trials and tribulation, we come to the Lord in this small part of the service. That's the moment in which the Lord renew and restore our lives. But the gift was also saying that a few were sleeping. And my brethren, it is important for us to understand that we leave the moment of midnight, we leave a moment of darkness. But at this moment, we, the Church of God, the faithful Church, the ones who have heard and know the Lord, we are at God's feet. We are here to offer a service and glorify the name of the Lord. We are here to offer to Him our lives. Because, my brethren, when we give ourselves to the Lord, this God, He operates on behalf of our hearts. That's what the Word of the Lord is, this. Wake up. Wake up for the service. Wake up for the fellowship. Wake up for the breaking of bread. Because in this way, the Lord will give life to each one of us. My brethren, there, that young man, that they had this that experience. And my hope is that tonight, the Lord may give to the same experience to each one who have the same need and that we may have our lives renewed and restored and that we may glorify the name of our God glorify in the assurance of a salvation that has been given to God to each one of us we're going to praise the name of the Lord with another song at this moment and glorify our God
Glory to Jesus. I'm going to hand the word to Pastor Ronil for the sequence of the service tonight. Everyone, peace of the Lord. The message was delivered, the spiritual gifts were shared. So, here are the advice of the Lord for those brethren that the spiritual gift spoke to their hearts. Let's try to serve the Lord with greater dedication, a greater definition of the Lord, because our lives, our call. This is our call. We cannot be here and wasting our time. We need to invest our time on what is eternal, what doesn't perish. Amen. That's why the Lord tonight is giving us this blessing of being able to be part of the service where the Lord has spoken to us in a wonderful way. Let's close our eyes and pray, bring ourselves to a close. And afterwards, we're going to begin the part of assistance. If anyone needed an assistance, we are making ourselves available to pray for whoever may, might need. Lord, want tonight, at this moment, glorify our name for yet another night in your presence. Because truly, Lord, your word speaks to our heart. Your word, Lord, brings life, brings change, brings, Lord, it fills the emptiness that many times takes a hold of our heart. That's why tonight, in a single voice, in a single song of praise, we glorify you, Lord, for the received blessings, for your care, for the love of the Lord, for everything that you have done on behalf of of the faithful church, receive our adoration. The prayer do say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, amen. In your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations and the gifts of the Holy Spirit may be poured out to on each one of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. We want to wish everyone the peace of the Lord. The ones who need assistance can remain here on the room and we'll then give you the proper assistance. The peace of the Lord. Pai Senhor, irmãos. Pai Senhor. Pai do Senhor. Pai Senhor. Pai do Senhor. Ô, Oi. Eu estava querendo uma assistência a respeito de um assunto que nós conversamos há um tempo atrás.